Always read the reviews. For background, I'm a fairly fit 22-year-old female. I work for a pretty well-known health club in the northwest of England. I've been asked on a pretty simple path of self-improvement whilst working part-time and studying at university. Therefore, when my manager asked me if I wanted to do a lifeguard qualification for our poolside, I happily agreed. It was all an experience paid trip, so I would never have said no anyways. They paid for my travel, about an hour away from where I was living, but I drive anyways, so they just paid for petrol, the hotel, the food, and of course, everything else. It was all pretty cool, I thought. The way the course was set out was pretty normal for a lifeguard course, I assume. It was three days worth of training, four days off. I returned back home to work, and then I would travel back again for three more days. On the third, graduating from the course and becoming a lifeguard. The first three days were amazing. I found my hotel pretty easily, and although it was in a dodgy looking area, I did sleep well, and the staff were nothing but helpful. I was hoping to return to the same hotel for my last three days. However, the day before I was due to return to my last three days, my manager told me that the hotel was fully booked. He quickly booked me another one, which was in the middle of the town center. I looked the hotel up and the exterior was dodgy, but I thought I may as well give it a chance, as it was only for two nights. I went to my first day at lifeguarding training as normal, when one of the local girls told me that the hotel I was about to stay at had no on-site parking. She also mentioned that all the surrounding car parks were only for short stays, maximum two hours, and it would be best to leave my car at the training center and she would take me to my hotel and pick me up in the morning to go to training. I thought this was very helpful, thanked her, and took her up on her offer. After finishing for the day, I got into her car and she took me to my hotel. She also mentioned that she used to rent near this hotel, which was a small family-run business and not a chain. It had no room service nor kitchen, and therefore pointed me in the right direction to Sandbury's, McDonald's, and Subway. Perfect! Night 1 in the hotel. I walked into the hotel. The lobby seemed nice, although there was construction in all the surrounding rooms. The girl at the front desk, blonde hair, blue eyes, greeted me and began to check me in. She smiled and let me know that I had been upgraded, but she didn't know why. I didn't question it. I was just happy to be in the executive suite. She walked me into my room, which was like a maze. You needed a special key card to get to all my set of rooms, the executive suites. This meant no random people could walk through the hallway near my room. I felt safe. Upon entering my room, I was amazed. I have never been in something so classy. The room itself was massive. On the left, there were upstairs to the bathroom stairs. There was a balcony, a queen-size bed, a couch TV with Netflix, and a table full of complimentary water, tea, and biscuits. I chilled for a bit, and then suddenly realized how hungry I was, and thought I should nip at Sandberries before it got dark outside. All was good. On the way back from the shop was when it all started to get weird. I returned to the hotel and got to the door, which needed a special key to open the doors for the executive suites, and there was a man just standing outside, dressed in a suit. We looked at each other for a moment before I walked past and scanned the door open. I automatically regretted it. The man followed me through, very closely. Now I'm a very nervous person. I, I panic at everything. It drives people crazy, and of course I panicked at this. I thought better safe than sorry and literally ran to my room. However, I turned my head slightly to see that the man was actually kept up to me very well. I started to weep and opened my door extremely clumsily, threw myself in, and slammed the door closed. The weirdest bit was that the man actually looked as though he was about to walk into the room. Weird. Now, before you're probably thinking, why didn't you call the front desk? And the truth is, I don't know. M maybe I should have, but with how the story progresses, I know it had to be the right thing to do by not calling the front desk. I'll explain. Don't worry. I eventually calmed myself down and thought about running myself a bath before Love Island started at 9pm. I ran the bath, stripped naked, and sat on the toilet to wee graphic but relevant. I left the bathroom door open wide open because I was in a nice hotel room and why not? I had a very clear view of the front door. As I stand up to flush, I hear a noise, like the sound of the front door opening. I looked up to see that it has opened. I ran to the bathroom door and slammed it shut and locked it. I sank to the floor and cried. I turned the bath off so I could listen closely to the room outside, but heard nothing. I messed with my best friend who lives in Crete, so even if something did happen, she wouldn't have been able to do anything about it. I don't even know why, I just called her. I sat on the floor for half an hour till my friend convinced me it was all in my head and to check. 
I let her know my hotel name and room number, just in case, and told her if I did not reply in five minutes, no matter what, to call the police for me. She agreed, and I left the bathroom. All looked normal. I checked under the bed, the balcony, wardrobe, etc., and everything was fine. No mass murderers. Although I tried to lock the front door with a manual lock that are normally on hotel room doors, but found that there wasn't one. This freaked me out a bit, but I laughed at myself, grabbed one of the two bottles of free water, downed it during Love Island, and fell asleep soundly. When I woke the next day, I got ready quickly, because I overslept, grabbed the last bottle of water off the desk, and ran to meet the girl who was picking me up for training. I forgot all about the night's event. The last night at the hotel. Now, here's where shit gets even weirder. I come back relatively early to revise for the assessments the next day. It, it, it was about 30 degrees outside and inside the unair conditioned room. So I stripped to my underwear. I noticed that none of the complimentary waters have been restocked. So I assumed it was maybe just one off considering I didn't pay full price for the room. I revised for maybe 30 minutes, but the heat made me sleepy. I don't even remember falling asleep, but I do remember the sound of the door next to me slammed shut, the front door. I felt groggy and didn't open my eyes straight away when I did. It took my eyes a few seconds to adjust. I brushed it off quickly until I sat up straight, my eyes focused on the table, which was now full of complimentary water. It definitely was not there before, next to me in bed. A random sock, black ankle sock, that was not mine. One of my socks that I put in a pair was no longer on the floor, but I'd gone missing altogether, like someone had taken off their own sock and put mine on. My mind automatically thought it had to be staff, and therefore I didn't complain to management. This was not a chain hotel where a creepy employee couldn't be accountable, but a family-run business. What if I complained that the creep had been doing this? I barricaded myself into the room and barely slept that night. Upon checkout, an elderly man at the front desk who had only seen him passing, he asked if I liked my room. I tried to be polite and told him yes, which despite the weird events, which I began to question myself about again, he told me that the manager had rang the day before I arrived, and he decided to give me a quiet room to myself, which he likes to do for the younger girl. He then asked me to leave them a good review. I began to feel uneasy again, but had my lifeguard assessment that day to push it to the back of my mind. I passed with flying colors and drove home. It wasn't until I sat in my own bed that the situation hit me. Something wasn't sitting right with me. So I went on the hotel's trip advisor, something I should have done, or my managers should have done when sending a young girl alone at the start. Three separate reviews. One of the four reviews I bothered to read before feeling too sick to continue. Three contained a warning to women. Men were trying to get into their rooms, and staff would walk in unannounced. Even when they were confronted, the staff would deny it. This was when I knew I had not made what had happened up in my head. People, or person, had been coming into my room whilst I slept, half naked, and stayed for an unknown period of time, stealing my clothing. It sends chills down my spine just writing this now. I let my manager know, who have made a complaint against the company, but so far nothing has happened. I don't know what else to do about the situation. I can send the screenshots if you guys are interested. Women, girls, and lone travelers always read the reviews. How was someone's let's not meet tonight? Well, it finally happened. As a side job, I refinish bathtubs for apartment complexes. It's great money and I pretty much make my own schedule. I get a list of units that I need done and when and I do them at my leisure. I always feared early on that I would one day walk into an apartment with people just living their lives, embarrassing myself and scaring them. But after a while, you don't fear it anymore because it never happens until today. So, after work for my full-time job, I have a unit that needs done. I was given the unit number, and I have a turn key for the complex. It is not a master key, as the apartment complex changes the locks whenever someone moves out to a turn key. 
So I get to the unit and I'm working the turn key. Now, 80% of the time, I have to work to get to the key to unlock the deadbolt. You know, the, the, the pull the key out just slightly deal. Well, it's not working. I'm really good at it with no luck. I can hear the neighbor's dog at the door growling. Awesome. I figure maybe the maintenance guy just didn't put the turn key on as it has happened before. So I call him, no answer, because I'm, I'm not jiggling the key, it's really quiet. Just then I hear the movement behind the door. Now, I know what you're thinking because it's obvious. But dummy says, oh, it's probably the cleaning person who has her headphones in. As I make a habit of locking the door when I'm working, as I have my headphones in, and don't want to be surprised, I go ahead and knock. The most scared young woman just cracks the door. Only then did it hit me. I couldn't apologize enough, but I realized the longer I stood there apologizing, the more uncomfortable she was. The entire, the entire time she didn't say a word, while I was spewing word vomit about the wrong unit and I'm so sorry, I believe I even said I'm sorry, I bet you were really freaked out, but that makes sense, why the key wasn't working. Looking back, I want to facepalm the entire situation, but I don't think there's anything I could have said to redeem myself in the moment. Even though it's not my fault, I still feel bad for how she must have felt. And the chance she reads this, I, I really am sorry. I called the maintenance guy who apologized. It was Unit 20, not, not Unit 22. Creeper at McDonald's 2. You may have seen my first Creeper at McDonald's story, and I'm gonna update with more of my experiences about there. So my second encounter with a creep starts like this. Again, 16-year-old female working as a customer care manager on front of house for McDonald's. Now, where I am from, when you are front of house, you are required to wear a light striped top, a yellow neck scarf, and a pencil skirt to just below the knee, which has a small split up the back. I always button my shirt right up to the top, so I always look very modest. And I would never say a McDonald's uniform is attractive. Anyways, when I worked at McDonald's, I always put my all into everything I did. So I knew tilts, drive through drinks, serving, etc. I've also always been someone that will happily have a conversation with someone to make their experience enjoyable and hopefully make them want to come back. I was working on tills when creeper number two came through the door. He was a tall blonde bodybuilder, at least 50 though. He came to the till and ordered, didn't look very happy. So I asked the obvious questions, how was your day, etc. He made small talk and we all got chatting about both of our days. After he tells me, it's nice to see someone smile around here. Everyone else is grumpy, nice enough compliments. I was used to it. He was right, not many people here enjoy this job. He starts coming in once a week on a Wednesday morning. Every, every morning, he would come in, we would have a chat. If I was on the floor front of house, we would chat and sit down even at a table. And my managers were fine with this, as they knew it made each customer's experience unique. We got to know each other's names. His name was Michael. I started college on a Wednesday and Thursday and worked at McDonald's part-time, so my shifts changed. I worked Mondays, Tuesdays, and Saturdays instead of Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, and sometimes extra days if they needed me. Michael started coming into McDonald's every day to find when I was working. First red flag, but I figured he is just lonely and needs someone to talk to. Anyways, he worked out my shift pattern and came in on Tuesdays instead after asking me why I wasn't in on Wednesdays because he missed our chat. He'd do this thing where he let someone like go in front of him just so he could be at my till instead. Again, we chatted when he came in. I didn't really think this was odd. This is where it got a bit more weird though. We were sitting down talking and he decided to really, really open up to me. He told me how him and his wife were going through a messy divorce. He started going into the details of why. He had punched his son. Now this guy was big, looked like he was like a bodybuilder or something like that. I can't remember exactly what had happened, but he had ended up smacking, smacking his wife too, I think. And here he was telling me this. I'm no counselor after all. I'm a person that works at McDonald's. And after proceeding to tell me how big his house is probably to try to grip my attention he started telling me how he was living in the basement of the house that he owned and it wasn't fair i'm going to hit her again if this carries on apparently the wife and son wanted him out and they were going to have it and not pay him for it blah 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 blah. he wasn't letting that happen his son will talk to him blah 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 he started asking me for advice a 16 year old girl I, I didn't really know what to say, so I just basically said everything happens for a reason, I suppose. And as I went to get up, he asked me to sit back down. Now, 
I had already been sitting for nearly half an hour, and I know I said my managers don't really care, but that's pushing it a little bit. <laughs> so I told him, I really had to go. He carried on trying to get me to sit back down, but let me go in the end. Now, this may seem totally unrelated, but trust me, it will make sense later on. At McDonald's, you have the uh, sauce pumps, right? Well, they are connected to a big bag of sauce, which has a popper in the top of it. You basically pop the tube into the popper on the bag, but Jesus Christ, this thing is uh, fiddly. It can take me about 10 minutes just to get it connected, then to put the heavy bag in the holder on the side is another 5 minutes. It's a nightmare. Right back to the story. The sauce had ran out, and I had to fiddle about getting it in where the sauce dispenser is in right opposite from where Michaels always sits. I could feel his eyes burning into my back as I did this, and any time I turn around, he'd be looking at me and just smile. It, it, it made me feel a bit, fair bit uncomfortable, but hey, oh, it's my job, and you deal with this stuff all the time, trust me. He's not the first person that I've had perving at my bum, trust me. He came back a few more times, and each time I felt more and more uneasy. He started to be a little bit more personal, telling me he thought I was a pretty young girl, and that we should meet up for coffee at some point, and I politely declined. Michael then said, Can I ask you something personal? And I said, What is it? I can't promise I'll answer. Haha, <laughs> are you a virgin? I'm not answering that. What size are your tits? I have a boyfriend, and I'm not comfortable answering these uh, questions. Do you love your boyfriend? Would you leave your boyfriend for me? My boyfriend is behind the counter. I was trying to scare him. And I didn't think he'll be very happy with you asking me these questions like that. Just make sure he treats you right. You are a lovely girl. Anyways, I won't be coming back here for a while, so can I have your number? I don't think my boyfriend will be happy with that either. After that, I go to the back room to calm myself, as this was very unnerving for me. He was an older guy being very strange and asking super inappropriate questions of me. He knew my age, as I told him previously. The day continued. He had left. I continued and went home. When I woke up the next morning, I had a message on WhatsApp, a message on Facebook, and a friend request on there, and an Instagram follow. It was Michael. I don't know how, but he found all my personal accounts just through my first name. The only way I can think of him finding it is by asking a colleague what my surname is and getting my number off one of them. Maybe he was friendly with one of my other workers and got my numbers from them. I don't, I don't, I don't know, man. He had messaged me saying how he needed to see more of my pictures. My Facebook and Insta are set to private, but he saw the main pictures of them and my WhatsApp photo. He had sent another message and about how he loved looking at my ass when I was bent over crawling on the floor to fix the sauce bags saying all the things that he would love to do to me. At that point, I noped out and blocked him on everything. I still get messages from other accounts he has made, wishing me a Merry Christmas, etc. Even though he shouldn't gotten the gist of me not wanting to talk to him, luckily for me, I moved away a week or so after that happened, so Michael, let's not meet again.